If you do what's easy in life, if you do what's easy in life, your life's going to be hard. If you do what's hard in life, your life's going to be easy. Literally every problem I ever had or any issue I ever had with work, my personal life, anything was always because of this. Because of some lack of self-control, daily actions that forgo small immediate reinforcers to access larger, more remote rewards that, that help you be successful. I want to strongly suggest that at least once a day, you do something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable and out of your comfort zone and something you don't want to do at least once a day. I try to do it like many times a day. I usually try to do it in the morning. Do one thing that makes you uncomfortable because I guarantee you the long game is a huge return on investment for you personally, for your family, for your, your pocket, financially, for your health. Example, I can hate doing the treadmill, but I know that I have this borderline diabetes. If I don't do it, then I'll start having high blood sugar, which means that I'll start gaining too much weight, which means that I'll feel like shit and then I won't be able to come to work. And, and like everything spirals, right? Self-control. We all know how bad it is come October 15th, all of a sudden kids are booted out of district and they're sent to a private restrictive setting. If the parents aren't involved, then maybe not the right thing happens and the kid's in a restrictive setting. So I started thinking about just the direction of like clinically, if you, if the school doesn't do an FBA in September and then they just wait till October and they don't do the right thing with the uncomfortable thing and is doing a functional behavior assessment and getting to the source of the problem, the cause or the function and people don't want to do it. Like they don't want to collect the data. They don't want to do all this. They just want to take a shortcut and they want you to come in and say, give me a treatment. And then you're just plugging holes without knowing the function. So I just started thinking outside the box, like what are all these examples of this? I heard a quote and I wish I knew who said it, but this quote is what I thought meant a lot to me. And it was, if you do what's easy in life, if you do what's easy in life, your life's gonna be hard. If you do what's hard in life, your life's gonna be easy. And it sounds like a little cliche and it sounds too easy, but, but think about it. If you take the easy way out and shortcuts every single day, whether it's your health, whether it's your relationships, whatever it is, in the long run, it's so bad for you. When you do shit that's hard and you, you discipline yourself, your life becomes so much easier in the long run. You get momentum and, and it's really hard to turn negative momentum around. So if you do, have a really poor diet or you do not, you don't spend that time with your loved one, you'll see it unwind. Your foundation starts to just come apart. And I was given an example last night about my daughter, Olivia. <laughs> it's like, when I when I go pick her up in Delaware, uh, they're, she, she's with her teammates and I'm just an embarrassment. <laughs> like just anything I say at her age at 13 and her friends, it's just like, oh, dad, don't talk. You just embarrass me. Just shut up and look good or whatever. Like that's the, like she doesn't say that, but that's the feeling I get. So I'm just like, don't say anything. But then there's this, there's this little window of time that's literally 18 minutes when I drop her friends off, her teammates um, in front of me, and then I drive to Mount Laurel with her and she's in the front seat with me. We have this 18 minute window and that an 18 minute window is so powerful to me because it's the one time she just opens up to me and connects because we're in the car there's no choice unless she's on her phone and and she talks with me and i find out things i find out um what she needs what i can what, what i can offer her and that 18 minutes is so goddamn precious to me that that uh i'll never give that up and i just want you to think of what, what is your 18 minutes like what is your eight your 18 minutes whether it's your relationship or whether it's your studying all out with you know fluency or whether it's um your exercise for 18 minutes but think about i mean it's uncomfortable sometimes it's silent and i'm like hey libby how's the weather you know <laughs> but it, but then i get her talking and it feels so good because i built another strand in the relationship here's another one giving that feedback to the person you mentor it's uncomfortable to tell people stuff they don't want to hear i hate it i, I really dislike it 
I think Matt likes it, <laughs> Linder. But it, it's just, I don't, it doesn't make me feel good to make someone not feel good. I mean, I really dislike telling people things they don't want to hear. But it requires discipline, and I create the right moment to do it, and it's uncomfortable, but it was the right thing to do because that person's behavior changed the next time, if I did it correctly, because it all matters how the outcome. That undesirable moment that you don't want to have, that uncomfortable feeling, produces exponential results for the learner that that person's serving, the person's performance increases. Again, it's it's an uncomfortable thing you may not want to do, but the results are are have a compound effect. Here's here's the thing I just thought of. In the moment, you want to scream at your dog, your husband, somebody like because that negative reinforcement stops it immediately. The teacher wants to have a reprimand. It feels good because temporarily the dog the dog stops barking, the child stops screaming, the teacher listens, people go away from you. Whatever it is, the problem immediately goes away but the long-term outcome is you just taught you modeled up behavior or inappropriate behavior should I say you modeled like you know aggressive like yelling like I'm doing with cursing <laughs> so you model inappropriate behavior and then the learner just realizes that in the long run I'm gonna avoid that person at all possibilities I'm gonna escape and I'm probably gonna have behavioral contract contrast and act up around other people that don't yell at me Right? There's all these like side effects or ripples that are negative. If I would just do what Marlene said and go get the, <laughs> like on everything, like, but go do the TSA pre-check. You ever do that? Yeah. You, you just you just go spend some time going to what the airport. Yeah. You fill out a bunch some paperwork. You sit in line. It's uncomfortable. I don't feel like doing it. But the long-term game will be hundreds of minutes of time. I don't. You don't have to take your shoes off in the airport. You don't take your laptop out of your bag. Yeah, you leave your own terminal at Philly now. Yes. Change your oil in your car so you don't break down. Like it takes a little time. You don't really want to do it, but like you were saying, like all of a sudden you're you're not gonna your engine's not gonna freeze up. And you're not gonna have to buy a new car just because you didn't change it. When I got my car, my, they didn't transfer my new registration, so it literally ended June 30th. And I knew I had the form in my car. I hate going to the DMV. Mm -hmm. So... Can't I, imagine why. Well, since you don't have a driver's license, you're going to need a birth certificate. Really? Really. Uh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Those people are really super discretionary effort too, right? Like, they, <laughs> you can tell they're paid for performance because they can't wait to... Yeah. Pleasant. So I literally went today and I wasn't there that long because it was just registration they had the thing. I literally walked out and I, I laughed because I did um, Step Brothers. The movie Step Brothers when he walks out the toilet paper, he's like, yeah, and the receipt. I literally had, I'm like, yeah, and then I'm like, knocked it off on my thing. I'm like, I never felt so good to get one thing done. I find that when I exercise more, I do better with my learners, especially in the schools. Like a lot of the kids I work with, they're they're running right out of the classroom or they're trying to escape right out the front door. So I find that it's, my job is a lot easier when I can yeah, keep up yeah, with them and they're not, you know. I read a lot about like psychology and stuff and list a lot of motivational people. And like one of the common, I guess, uh, things they, they wrestle with is like the idea of happiness and being fulfilled. And one of the common, you know, threads amongst everybody's answer is the idea of like progress, and that involves obviously pushing yourself past your comfort zone and, and getting uncomfortable doing what's difficult, but progressing, you know. And uh, I think people have like an endless potential to progress in some area of their life, and I think you said you know, doing what's difficult is going to pay off. It's going to be this, this feeling of happiness and fulfillment. So it is. You know, even if you're, you know, progressing in your field, you know, getting your BCBA or whatever it is. Once you feel like you're in a good spot there, then you might want to work on your personal relationships mm -hmm. or your spiritual life, your physical health, whatever it may be. So there's always room, and I think, progress and pushing yourself. Happiness is progress. Exactly. It really is.